Hello and welcome to The Game Plan. I'm Paul Shodka, joined by former New South Wales 5'8", Josh Reynolds. Thanks for joining us today, Josh. Thanks for having me, mate. Today we're going to talk about three halves with a lot to play for in 2024. And to begin, let's look at a 200 gamer who is switching clubs this off-season. It's none other than your old teammate, Luke Brooks. Josh, what's one aspect of Luke's game that you really like? Well, before I answer that, I'm just really excited for Luke to get a fresh start. He's copped the brunt of it at the Tigers, and it's unfair. I play with him. Not only is he a general and good football player, he's a general and good bloke. So I'm happy for him to go to Manly. You know, he's got a great spine there, Cherry Evans, Turbo. So I think he'll just fit in perfectly. And the thing that I think he's going to really take to the next level this year is his running game. He's really known for that. Them boys opening up for him for once in his career, he's going to have a blinder. I, I really think he's going to be one of the best sixes in the games and I'm super excited to see how he goes. Awesome stuff. Let's have a look at some of those runs that uh, he does. Yeah, so this is one of Brooks' uh, best things I used to... I used to try and learn a bit off him. I, I think he plays short sides really well. Um, and what he looks at, looks for straight away is to try and get over the advantage line. So he's really tight to to Appy right here, and he wants to beat he wants to beat the markers with speed, which I spoke about was one of his best assets. So he sees a he sees a late defender coming back here. If we just play this, he's over the ad line, beats the marker. If we pause it here, straight away Luke shows the inside, which holds that marker up. And this three defenders here who are clearly in a bit of tatters, they don't really know what Brooks is going to do which is good. As a half, you're always taught to show inside first. Brooksy sees that there's three there, so he feels he has to go back on the inside, which is the right option. So if you play it through, he plays nice and square and comes off his left foot and passes on the inside to Wakeham, who Nivinelli scores. The thing about that clip is, if there was one more defender there, or one less, he would have went on, he would have went on the outside. Yeah. So the reason for him to come back on the inside was a late retreating defender back at A, he didn't really know what Brooks he was going to do. He showed on the in inside to hold those markers back up and then come on under under A. And as I said, I, I think he plays short sides really well. And, if, and he, when he uses his speed, he's when he's at his best. So yeah, that was a, that was a good little play from Brooksy there. If we go on to our next one, this is him getting over the ad line again straight away. As I said, he he plays very flat. The one thing I learned about Brooksy playing with him was he. He goes really fast sideways. He's really, he's, his speed's actually de deceptive. I don't people people realise how fast he is, but when he goes across field sideways, it actually makes defenders sit in their chair. And if you can see here, Brooksy's role, realistically, is to get to Luciano, the foreman, the, the back rower, as we see. But he's got on the outside of him with his speed. So that puts the halfback in Tom Deed and under pressure straight away. So Tom Dearden's thinking, do I come in on Brooksy or do I hold out and stick to my principles because the Tigers have still got numbers out here. Yeah. So Brooksy uses his speed, look, looks at Dearden and just waits for him to make a play. Shows and goes, beats Luciano for speed and then you know looks for support but there's no one there. Once again, his speed gets him into really good, good spots and that's what I hope he brings this year in the fact of using that speed and... There's a, there's a time and place to play square, nice and square into the line, but the good thing about Brooksy is he gets a cross field fast and he makes defenders sit. That's what you want to do when you're getting across field. You want to make defenders sit in their chair and then make you know the defender next and then make a decision. So that's one of his, his best assets. And this one's probably a little bit of a, a, a little smart play from the Tigers against my beloved Bulldogs. Brooksy actually comes from the short side. Three markers. Slow retreat here. Brooksy uses his vision and uses his show and go here and his deception to put the make Reedy chase him. If we could play this, stop it here. As soon as he sees Reed straight in front of him, Reed has this is why it's good push here from I'm not sure who it is, could be Wakeham. He makes this play. Brooksy sees Reedy, reads his eyes, and throws the dummy. And he goes straight through the middle. This is why I think. People don't, he doesn't really get the rap for being smart, but that's a smart play. To come from the, come from the open side, to see the markers aren't square, to look straight at Reed and throw the show and go, it was a silky little play from, from our little mate right there. It's not just his running game though, is it? He's got a very good passing game and Manly's going to be able to take advantage of that now, both sides of the rocks, having him and Cherry Evans. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think he's got the whole package. I honestly really do. I'm going to throw it out there. I think he could be up there with, you know, Dally M halfback of the year. Yeah. Sorry, 5'8 now. Yeah. So it's hard to get used to yeah. that. Yeah, he just reads the game really well. And I just think that 
because we know that Cherry Evans and, and, and Travoyevich have, have got a really good combination. And then, you know, Luke Brook en enters the equation, and I just think that's going to take them to the next level. So we'll look at a few of Brooksy's passes now. And the one I love, this is probably my, my favourite clip because it just, it is he's perfect halves play. And I'll break it down slowly. But so Brooksy starts on the short side straight away now. He's looking at Guffo. And he's, he's waiting for Gutho to make a decision to see where he goes. If Gutho doesn't, doesn't come to the open side as he does in the second, you will see Brooksy take on that short side. And it's not a bad option, as we've seen him do it before. He's really good at squaring up an A defender and kicking to, to B defender, and that's what you want to do down a short side. But here, he sees Gutho go to the short side. And this is what we want. As Harbs, we're trying to create differences, the a balance in, imbalance in numbers. So you've got... One, two, three, four, five and a half, six on the short side from that's that's that near post. Mm. So one hundred percent the play is to come on onto the open. And Brooksy sees that. Jackson Hastings plays nice and square. And because those numbers aren't correct, Sean Lane here has to make a very, very hard read. So he has to check this lead and then possibly get Brooksy as well. And if you're not, if you're not fast enough to, to get off the lead, it is so that puts our decision back onto the half, as Brooksy did with Dearden before. And Brooksy, I find his pass selection into the line is one of his greatest assets. So we'll see it here where Sean Lane gets caught. He's gone. So Brooksy knows to go straight. At, he doesn't need to go sideways. He needs to go straight at Dylan Walker, this, this three defender. And he makes his decision for him, as Dearden did. Sorry. Dylan Brown, as 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 did and made the decision before, so he comes in, plays short to Luciano here. That's the one where for me for Brooksy is he he reads the game really well, and he was at the back of a play there, and he's probably going to be at the back of a, a lot of the plays this year because Cherry Owens will be the seven and, and going out the front. But another perfect example of this one, we call this play a a 71, where Hastings gets across the field, I pause it there. And his job now for Hastings is to get to Mitch Moses, who's the three in defender. The four man does, does fairly well to help Mitch go on to that next lead player. But it's Brooksy's sheer speed that I think Will Panisi gets caught on because Will Panisi has to take, take this lead here. But then Brooksy gets on the outside, burns him for speed. The winger didn't come in. If so if, if as centre play, if, if, if your inside gets caught, you, you've got to jam. Yeah. So, and then Brooksy just got Panisi for speed and finds the final pass at the end. So speed plus working on the right players there really made that a really good try, but a great decision by Brooksy in the end. And this one is just a simple lead for lead. So you see these plays every week and it all relies on a, a few things. So right now, I think that's Hastings. He's trying to get straight at, the, as I said it before, the four man and try and sit the three man in the chair. So he goes into line, plays a little bit early to Brooksy. So the four man, he's actually, he's not in the best position, but he's not in the worst position to be coming across uh, to, to help out his three man. But Brooksy, he's looking here, this line, these three guys, what are they doing? They're pretty square. In the defensive line, you want to be inside and outside fairly square with the guy inside and outside you. But he's, he's got the eyes of Felt. Felt's looking in. You can, you can see it now. And as soon as... Brooks, he sees that. He throws the ball over the top. I'll wind it back a little bit. See, this is where all good halves use their eyes. And you can see for this one moment, I'll try and pause it right on it. Brooksy was looking for Felt's reaction. And as soon as he got that, Brooksy makes the right decision and pops it over the top. And a great try in the corner. And that's just, that's just sheer vision. It honestly is. Like, it's... it's it's a bit nerve-wracking to throw the ball over the top like that sometimes because wingers will, some wingers are really good at going to it and then, you know, double Ding it. But another great play by, by Luke Dare and another, you know, string to his bow with, with his ball playing and his passing. And his number seven partner has got a great kicking game, but so does Luke Brooks. So it's going to take a lot of pressure off Daly Chervens with his kicking game and show some, some examples of what he's done for the West Tigers over the years with his boot. Yeah, that's the thing. We well, got a left footer and a right footer, and it's so hard to defend against. We talk about, well, let's let's do an example. The first example we've got right here is, so Brooksy's obviously a left footer, 
Jackson Hastings is a right footer. So right now they're looking at where the fullback is. Brooksy's realised Kony Nikarima's on, on the right hand side and he, he will realise that and take a step up and it's not a, a long lobby kick into the corner. He's going for a 40-20 here and takes the kick. Wing is, wing is up. Ends up being a great, a great play. Cody goes into touch but Brooksy's had to take a lot of the brunt of the kicking in, in, in his time. You know, like it's hard. Like I didn't enjoy it when I, a few times I played halfback, and, and a lot of the emphasis is on you to kick. I find when you play five eight, it's it's a bit less, it's a bit more chilled. So I think Brooksy will will love that role, and there'll be plenty of you know forty twenty opportunities down that left hand side for Manly this year. And this is just uh, just wanted to show everyone how how pinpoint he can be with his kicks. You don't want to put it too shallow. Jerome Hughes here can can sort of help too much. He's put it he's he's put it a little bit flat. Mm. So really, it's it's a one on one battle yeah. because if you pop it there, Hughes can you know he can possibly escort escort the winger off the ball, and it makes it a little bit harder for him to score this try. But Brooks has put it at the perfect height, the perfect spot, and that's a great leap from Ken Mamalo there. But that's just a great example of how precise he can be and. I feel he looks really nice when he hits the ball, lefties. Yeah. Left footers always look, look a, lot, a bit sweeter than us right unco people, but he's just good at all. And this is just the, the perfect way to finish on the last kick. You know, 30 metres out in, in a really bad spot. Brooksy just steps up and nails the field goal to unfortunately not win the game Almost. <laughs> for you Tigers supporters. <laughs> but let, if you take this back here, you know, he might not have to do it when he goes to Manly because Cherry Evans plots a lot of field goals. But what I love about this is Brooksy's here at the back. He says, you know what, I'm stepping up and I'm winning this for my team. And look what he does. Slowly you watch him step up, great drop, and nails the field goal. That's the Brooksy that we all love, the confident Brooksy taking opportunities on, backing himself, and hopefully he can do that next year at Brooksvale, apparently they call it now. So, <laughs> no, nah, I'm excited like for that. you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Josh. Thank you. To watch more in-depth analysis on the game plan, you can go to nrl.com.